our series, Faith Over Fear. Thank you, Antoine. As we continue our series, Faith Over Fear, I, I want to preach today, subtitled the message, Hearing God. Hearing God. He, hearing the voice of God. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. Listen, I, I want to talk about a subject that is very difficult to find in the earth today. It, it, it's hard to find people that will take the time to listen. No, to, to listen, if you were to listen to the people talking today on social media and in the media at large, it is amazing to me, you would believe that the world is collapsing into chaos and is absolutely out of control. That there is something that is spiraling in the earth today, if you would take the time to listen, that will create such anxiety, such fear, such trepidation. If you would take the time to listen to what people are saying, you would think that there was not a God who was really in charge. It is amazing to me how much talking that is being done. And, and listen, today it's almost impossible to find listeners. It's impossible almost to find people that will listen. It's amazing to me how many people be, be, that want to talk and be heard but never want to take the time to listen. Now, I'm a relatively young man. I was raised in the old school. My, my grandparents would tell me that's why God gave you two ears and one mouth because you and I should listen twice as much as we should speak. But the problem is everybody has an opinion about everything. Whether they're an expert or not, they believe their opinion is truth. Hmm. Whether we're involved in the situation or not, people still have an opinion about said situation. Isn't it amazing how many people have an opinion about your marriage and aren't even in your marriage? How many people have an opinion about the way you should raise your kids and, and, and they don't even have kids? Y'all not going to talk to me. Okay. Now, most often, watch this, most often, even when the person that is not speaking is not really listening, they're just thinking of what they're going to get to say next when you take a breath. Hmm. Because I have found in the earth today the most two popular words that are put together is this, I think. Well, I think you should buy this. Well, I think you should wear that. Well, I think the church should be this. Well, I think, hmm, see, I, I've learned something in trying to hear the voice of God. The only way we get to hear him is if we're not the ones talking. Here's something else I've learned, watch this, that both hear and fear require an ear. For me to hear, I have to have an ear. And for me to fear, I must also allow something to have my ear as well. Listen, did you hear me? Are you listening? Are you paying attention? How many times do we have a conversation with those that are older than us and we're so distracted by everything? It's amazing to me. How many times I try to have a conversation with somebody and they can't get out their phone long enough to engage? Grown men and women sitting in a meeting, and they're so conditioned to distractions that they, even if they're not paying attention to what they're doing, they still got to do all the clicking and the scrolling. And you see it in the church even today. We've gone from hearing the voice of God to falling in love with the theatrics of church. Now, those who are in love with the majesty and the atmosphere of a house of worship. They, they find peace. They find solace. They find rest. They, they, they find a sense of sanctity just by being in the place where God said he would meet us. And, and they pray and they talk to God, but they do not believe they can actually hear the voice of God or that he would truly intervene in their life or their affairs. They, they believe he exists but that he would actually clear his throat and have something to say 
is foreign. So what we do is we come to church or we come to a, a live stream or we come to a podcast or we come to a devotional and like a therapist laying on the couch, we lay there and we give God all of our burdens and we tell him all of our problems and we release all of that stress so that we can be lightened for the next six days so that we can feel better like we can make it for six days as if God has nothing to say. But the truth is that the majority of people are, have a speaking problem. Those that have a speaking problem will tell you that they really have a hearing problem. If you find someone with a speech impediment, it's because somewhere most likely they have a hearing issue. I remember when my nephew was being tested because they were working on his language, the first thing they did was they checked his hearing because they recognized that if his hearing is off, then his speech will be twisted in a certain way. Listen to me today. In this earth where everybody has an opinion, where everybody wants to run around without telling everybody what they think, I wanted to know something. Why what did God say? What did God say about corona? What did God say about our injustices? What did God say about this loneliness? What did God say about this oppression? What did God say about... I want to know at the end of the day, what is it that God is saying in this season? See, it's not even so important what we say to God. As much as it is what God says to us. Because if you can't hear right, you can't speak right. It doesn't matter how you try to communicate. If you can't hear, you don't know how to adjust your language. Because even in the book of Revelation, it doesn't say, let he who has a voice speak. It says, let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. What is it that God is saying about your situation? I know what you think. I know what that person thinks. I know what the bank thinks. I know what the doctor thinks. But what is it that God is saying about your situation? It's an interesting passage of scripture in the book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14. Watch this. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age. That is, those who, are by, who by reason of use have their senses exercised, watch this, to discern both good and and evil. Here's what the writer of Hebrews is saying, that there is a spiritual set of senses and then there is a natural set of senses. And what you have to do is you have to exercise your spiritual senses, your, your spiritual eyes, your, your spiritual touch, your spiritual taste, your spiritual smell, and yes, even your spiritual ability to hear. Because if you do not exercise your spiritual senses, they will lie dormant and you will not be able to walk in discerning of good versus evil. Huh. The New Testament even tells us that we have an inner ear. Uh, one translation says it is a circumcised ear. In other words, there are things that I will hear in the natural. But when I get to my spiritual ears, my circumcised ear, I will hear what's behind it more than what's being displayed by it. Uh, that, that, that it is what I call the ear of the soul. And you know what I'm talking about. Because about the time you're getting ready to do something, you'll, you'll hear something go, don't do that. Uh, 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 uh. Don't say that. I'm so ticked off. I don't care. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't you cuss them out. Yeah. Don't take that. Come on. Come on. Don't buy that. Yeah. You, you don't need that. Don't, don't go. It's an ear of the soul where you hear that still small voice warning you or telling you or leading you or guiding you. I have found that the people who operate with the most wisdom is because they sit and they try to hear what God is saying even though they're sitting in a room that may be Godless. It's the circumcised ear of the soul. But here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. 
We surround ourselves with so much noise, we don't hear anymore. <laughs> There's so much noise. I, I got in my truck today. Thank you, by the way. I got in my truck today, and I, I drove. I'm serious. It's a heart attack. Every time I get in, and I thank God for him and you. And, and, and I got in my truck today, and I turned on three different Christian radio stations. And one's telling me what's wrong with Trump. And one telling me what's right with Trump. And one's trying to sell me on something that I need next. Come on. And I thought to myself, what is God trying to say in this season? I don't care what you think. I don't care your opinion. I, I don't care even your political persuasion. Because I want you to remember, God is not Republican, and God is not Democrat. God, God is not even American. I need you to hear me today. Heaven and earth will pass away. But what God says, everything can be built on. So I finally got spiritual and just turned off the noise. Turned off the noise. I, hmm. we, we allow ourselves to be surrounded by so much noise that we don't even know how to listen anymore. Yeah. It, it's like, here's God, our navigator. He's our navigation system. And we're asking him to lead us and to guide us. I'm, I'm going to preach in a minute. Y'all just hang with me, okay? I'm laying this foundation. He, he, he is our navigation system. And he is the one that we're asking to give us turn by turn. He, he is the proverbial Siri of our soul. To give us and lead us directions. Watch this. But while he is wanting to be the Siri of our soul, most often we talk to him like Alexa. Alexa, turn on this. Alexa, what about this? Alexa, tell me to do this. Alexa, turn off this. Alexa, set a timer for this. Meanwhile, God is trying to be the Siri of our soul that says, if you know the plan you have for me. Have you ever got it? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Have you ever got into the car and you didn't know where you were going? You just knew you wanted to be there? So you'll take your phone out and say, can you get me directions to such and such? And here's what happens. We allow Siri to give us directions to such and such. But we have another agenda besides what we told Siri. So, uh-huh, <laughs> hang with me now. So what we've decided to do is about an hour into the trip, we're going to stop off at the exit. But the problem is, we didn't ask Siri how to get to the exit. We asked Siri how to get to the destination. And here's Siri going, turn here, turn here. Oh, dummy, you got off on the wrong exit. <laughs> she didn't say all that, but <laughs> she's got to be thinking it. <laughs> and, and here, oh, no, no, get back onto the exit. You need to turn around. You need to go here. You need to turn left. This is the destination. You didn't say this was the destination. You said this was the destination. Turn here, turn here. No, 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 recalibrating, 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 recalibrating. And here's God who loves us so much that even when we get off track, he loves us enough to recalibrate to get us right back on track. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And because you decided that you wanted him to have the directions of your life and he knows the plan that he has for you. Watch this. But Siri will never give you directions unless you're willing to submit and say, go. Go here. I want to go here. You've got the direction. You've got the map. You've got the turn. I push go. I submit to your authority. Now go. And then we get off track and here's what we do. My God, she's talking to me too much. My God, she's getting on my nerves. Well, Siri, why don't you shut up in the name of Jesus? I swear, I can't stand this woman. I'm getting tired of this woman telling me what to do. I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm wearing to go. The problem is, you ask Siri to take you somewhere. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You ask Siri to take you somewhere, and now you've decided that you're going to get off track, and you're frustrated because Siri's trying to keep you in pace. So here's what we do. Ooh, I hit a button today, didn't I? 
my God, where's the turn off button? My God, I need her to shut up. I need to go do my own thing. And then when I'm ready, I'll come back on track. We submitted, and now we're frustrated because she won't let us not be focused. So what we do is we turn off the voice that has the directions because we want to do our own thing. Hmm. If we're going to land where God wants us to be, we must get our ears back. Faith cometh by hearing, not speaking. We may call those things which aren't as though they were, but we can't call them what they aren't, and we can't even call them what they are until the Lord told us, told us first what it is. Today's message is for you and I to realign ourselves back to the voice of the Lord again. Hmm. And the perfect example of this we find in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, where God just does a name drop and doesn't even tell the story. He just lets us know the life. And he says in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32, we'll just stay with 32 for the sake of time. He says, what more shall I say then, the writer says, for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jepheth and, and also of David, here it is, and Samuel and the prophets. He doesn't even take the time to tell us the story of Samuel because he's assuming you get it. So all he does is drop the name because you, by nature, should know the story. Just in case we don't know, I'll just remind you that Samuel was a miracle child given to Elkanah and Hannah. That Samuel, his name actually means God has heard. That Samuel is, is from the tribe of Levi and Samuel was the last judge given in the Bible. That Samuel was the one who anointed the two first kings. He anointed Saul to be king and he anointed David to be king. That, that Samuel is the first of the prophets to show up on the scene since the prophet Moses. That, that Samuel was a priest making sacrifices on behalf of the people and offering intercessory prayers according to 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 9, that Samuel was a Nazarite like the mighty Samson. That, that, that Watch this, that Samuel led great Passover, so much so that when King Josiah was there in the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 35, I believe it is, that even Josiah comes in and says, listen, there, this, this feast was almost on the level of the kind of Passover feast that was provided to us by the prophet Samuel. Samuel made such an impact that in Psalm 99, verse number 6, it talks about how Samuel was such a man of prayer and how God remembered his prayers, that, that God called Samuel by name twice. Listen, there were only eight people in the Bible that were heard, had heard their names spoken by God, and God called Samuel twice. That Samuel was so significant, watch this, that there were two books of the Old Testament that were named after him, and the second the book of Samuel, he's never even shown up. It was his book, but he's never even mentioned. Samuel was a prophet that did not fail. Samuel was a judge that was in alignment. Samuel was one that lived his entire life, and he died with the same great name as the one he started with. He did not have some deviation from the path of God, but he lived for God all of the days of his life that God dwelled with him and he dwelled with God and he did not falter, he did not fail. Even when the world was going the proverbial hell in a handbasket, he was still locked in with the thus saith the Lord of his life. The question is that we must answer today is how does that happen? How in the world can you live your entire life and never fail and never falter and never stray and never give up and never give in and never go away. I believe the only way that happens is you have to get your ears to be able to hear the voice of the God. I'm not talking about the ones on the side of your head. I'm talking about the ones on the side of your heart that have been circumcised and are attentive to the voice of God in your life. Huh. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 3, this is where it starts. 
Samuel, when he was conceived in the womb of Hannah, Hannah promised El uh, Eli, the prophet, that the priest, he said, if you, if you let me get pregnant, I'll give him right back to you. And the Bible says, as soon as he was weaned, he was in the house of the Lord. I want you to see something. That here's this child who has just gotten off of the loving breast of his mother in church. Now that's a whole story. That's a whole conversation for another day. But all of his life, he had a drug problem. He was drugged to church on Sunday. He was drugged to church on Monday. He was drugged to church on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. He, he was drugged to church. He lived in church. Anybody got that testimony? <laughs> lived in church all the days of his life. Watch this. That, that here is, the Bible says that Samuel was there, but not just present, but he was also ministering. This is what I'm excited about the mandate on this house is that we will raise kids that will be kids of ministry from the very beginning. That they won't be so busy being ministered to that they don't have the opportunity to release the thing on the inside of them. That even in the house of the Lord, he was ministering. Watch this. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Here's Samuel ministering to the Lord, but he's doing it under the authority and submission of the pastor. Watch this. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. And I believe that the word of the Lord is rare in our day. It's amazing to me that when I hear people come to our church and they begin to visit, people that are online and they begin to inbox me, they say, they say Pastor, it's so hard to find a church that would just preach the book. Because the word of the Lord is rare. Let me tell you why. Because we're so busy running around telling everybody what we think, we never take the time to open the holy writ, the canon, the measuring rod, and allow us to understand what God thinks about our situation. It is amazing to me how rare the word of the Lord is. I just like you. I'll flip channels from time to time. I'll listen to podcasts from time to time. I'll listen to live streams from time to time. And I hear a whole lot of talking, but nothing of real substance. Why? Because the word of the Lord has become rare in our lives. Because everybody tells us what's wrong with the book versus allowing the book to speak for itself the word of the Lord is rare but not only was the word of the Lord was rare there was no revelation see it's one thing to have the word it's another thing for it to have revelation to come with it it's another thing for there to be a lamp it's one thing to have a lamp it's another thing for the lamp to be turned on uh, there was a revelation and, and there, was, there was no overwhelming access to revelation in that season Verse 3 says that, watch this, that now Samuel did not even know the Lord. Here he is ministering to the God he doesn't even know yet. This is why you and I must train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't get apart. Here they are coming to the house of the Lord that they don't even know yet. And if we can teach them to be ministers to the Lord, when they really get it on the inside of them, it changes everything. Hmm. He was ministering to a God he did not even know. He was fulfilling assignments with no really real working knowledge of who God was. And, and as a child, he was unaware and he was ignorant. And in a time where God was presumed silent, this child was hearing the Lord. The Bible says in verse 8, watch this, and the Lord called to Samuel again the third time. And, and so he arose and he went down. This is the third time he's happened. He rose up and he went down to Eli and said, Eli, here I am, well, for you did call me. And then Eli perceived that the Lord was the one calling the boy. Therefore Eli, Eli said to Samuel, verse 9, go and lie down and it shall be that if he calls you that you must say, speak Lord. Your servant is, whew, there's a world of difference between hearing something and listening for something. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Did you hear me? I heard you, Mama. I heard you. I heard you scream in that shrill voice. I heard you. You sounded just like the devil. I heard you. No, your servant is listening. 
Have you ever had to grab your children by the ears and just go, listen to me. Listen to me. Here's a season where it is presumed in this society that God is not talking. Yet a little boy is listening. Now, here's what I believe. I believe at a very young age you begin to hear the voice of God for your life. <laughs> you didn't know what it was. But there was an inner small voice that you just knew, this is different. I remember the story that I heard of my mother-in-law. As a, Catholic, a young Catholic schoolgirl being raised, she felt she's in a Catholic school, yet she felt the drawing of a living God, that you would find her even in the most holy places of the Catholic church, on her face, crying out, for the presence of the Lord. At a very young age who was not trained to understand that. Isn't it interesting how our kids will come in to us and say things. And you're like. And we stand surprised. Where did that come from? I believe because they have an ear. That is hearing a God. That they don't even know yet. And you should recognize what it is. Because I believe that you felt the same way. That there was something leading you and navigating you and guiding you. And some of us were drugged to church, but we didn't know the God that got us there. Until we had an awakening of ourselves. And over time, we became so smart, we became so important, we became so focused on what success was for our own lives. That we began to stuff our spiritual ears with cotton. Because we felt like we had a better plan. And even God. And here you are at a young age and you're dreaming about stuff and your imagination is going wild. And you're seeing things and you're playing things. And, oh, he's just being creative. And, and I believe that even some of us, they, they said we used to have an imaginary friend. I believe that we had a friend that was sticking closer than a brother. That we were entertaining, even in our childhood, angels unaware. And because we didn't know what it was, we thought we allowed people who didn't understand what it was to rob us of that voice speaking to us. Isn't it amazing to watch little kids who can play by themselves but act like they're not alone? that are perfectly content running by themselves in the natural, but they're acting as if they're with their best friend in another realm. I believe that all of our lives, God has been drawing and wooing and speaking and revealing himself. But somewhere along the way, we decided to turn our physical ears on and pull our spiritual ears back. Hmm. I want to ask you a question. Because I landed on somebody's life. When did you stop listening? When did you stop listening? The Bible says in John 10, 27, Jesus, he says, my sheep, they know my voice and the voice of another they will not follow. And, and, and we're so busy begging God to speak, but, but are we really committed to listening when he does? I, I, was, I was getting my hair cut earlier this week, and I met this lady. And what I love about face masks is you can't see the preacher coming. Whew. This is awesome for me. I love it. And in, in, in secular moments like that, like I have a few masks, and one says faith over fear, and one says God is good, you know, those kinds of things. But, but in secular moments like this where I just want to let my light shine, not my preaching thing, I got a sermon for you, but I don't want you to read it before I get to your seat. I put on another mask, it's an American flag mask, and I put it on and I, I'll go in there. And then I got some hot pink lips too every once in a while. I just like freaking people out. Pray for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said, Lord have mercy. Uh. And I sat down in the chair of, of this hairstylist and it was abundantly obvious she was in bondage. 
And for the sake of not intimidation, but for the sake of you thinking this is a one bondage situation, I won't release that bondage. But it was abundantly clear she was in bondage. And, and we sat there, we began to talk, and, and, and she, not only was it abundantly clear she was in bondages, but, but she, then she began to admit to me her bondages, her, her things that she's wrapped in. And, and, and here's what she said. She made this statement. So, so I began to lead us into Jesus. But when I said Jesus, what she heard was church. Which is fun for me. Okay, here we go. This is awesome. This is awesome. So I began to talk about Jesus, and she began to talk about church. So here's what she said to me. She said, well, you don't understand. I am a Christian blank bondage. I am a Christian bondage. And here's what she said to me. She said, and the reason why I don't really go to church, although I am a believer of Jesus Christ, is because I believe people take the word of God and twist it for it to fit their own narrative. And I thought, hey, pot, there's the kettle. So I, I took the time to articulate, but she never caught it. That's why I'm going to keep going back. I said, so you mean to tell me that you believe that there are areas of the Bible where God is saying something, and because people don't agree, they'll twist it to fit their narrative? Yes, and that's what drives me crazy about church people. Hold up. So you believe that because it's in the book and you don't agree, you can twist it to sound as pretty as you want it to be and not read it for what it really says. She goes, yes, the church is full of those people. And I'm thinking, and Great Clips is too. <laughs> now, I will laugh with you, but I'm fishing for her. She can see the beam in the church. No, excuse me. She can see the splinter in the church. She can call the splinter in the church a beam. But she can't see the beam or the splinter in Great Clips. She was so busy being right, she never took the time to hear what God is really saying. Samuel comes down and says, Eli, what about this? And he says, no, 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 next time you say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Look at verse 10. And now the Lord came and stood and called to Samuel. At other times, Samuel, Samuel, and, and, and Samuel answered and said, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And look at what verse number 11 says. And the Lord says, come on, Antoine. And the Lord said to Samuel, this hit me. I'm about to do something. He said, Samuel, the reason why I gave my word and tried to hit your ears is because I want to let you in on a secret. I'm about to do something. The reason why I've taken the time to speak to you is because I'm about to do something. The reason why I've talked to you the way I've talked to you is because I'm about to do something. See, what I'm about to do shouldn't surprise you because I'm a God who does things. I, I'm a God who is active. I am a God who has momentum. As a matter of fact, the first two letters of my word, my name God, is go because there's something that I'm absolutely about to do. And I just want to tell you in advance that I'm about to do something. I, I'm going to lean on our, 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 ver, our song a minute ago. I, I'm about to do something and not just something, but I'm about to do something I'm about to do something big and, and I'm going to let you in on a secret before it ever shows up so that when it does show up, just, just be good news, Samuel, that I, when I do it, I better get all the credit for it because you heard it long before you ever saw it. Because faith cometh by 
And if I have to show you before it shows up, then you don't need faith for it. But I'm trying to get you to have faith for it. Even when you can't see it, I want you to open your ears. And what God was saying to Samuel is, if you open your ears, you won't be surprised when it shows up in your life. Because your faith will come by hearing and I need you to hear me and the reason why I was speaking to you at a young age is because I wanted you to get used to my voice so that when I started doing something you wouldn't be shocked by what it is because I want you to know what I've got for your life is for your life and all those things may leave your hand they will never leave your life because I'm about to do something big in your life and, and somebody who's got big things that God's saying ought to take a minute and just give God a praise right there for what you're hearing him say look at this I gotta hurry now in Hebrews chapter 12 watch this verse 25 the Bible says see that you do not refuse him who speaks don't refuse capital H him God who speaks that when God speaks don't refuse it here's why for if they did not escape who, re who refused him who spoke on earth much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven what he's saying is is he saying the condemnation of those who rejected me in the flesh would be the same condemnation for those who refuse to listen to me from heaven in the spiritual things I need you to know no matter what I'm saying speak Speak, Lord, your servant is listening, and we will not reject the word of the Lord in our lives. We must listen. Because here's why, verse 26, whose voice then shook the earth. When you will not hear the still small voice, then he will rattle everything in the natural in your life you didn't hear what I said he takes the time to whisper his will but he says if you refuse me in the whisper what I'm going to do next is I'm going to amplify my voice and what I'll do is I will shake everything in the natural Anybody ever gone through a shaking in the natural? Anybody ever gone through seasons that just shook you to your core, that just jacked you up, that just messed you up, and you're like, God, why in the world are you allowing this? I believe with all of my heart. One of the reasons is for some situations is because we wouldn't hear him in the whisper, so he's like, I'm going to shake everything in your life to drive you to your knees, to get you focused on me. Here's what the Lord was saying. He says, watch this, because once more, everything that can be shaken will be be shaken and those things that will remain verse 27 those are the things that shall remain in other words I'm shaking out this stuff that is a distraction for you I'm shaking away these people that are a distraction for you now I'm shaking away these things that you cannot carry into your new season and because you would not heat oh God have mercy because you would get rid of them in my whisper I'm gonna shake it all the way you don't hear what I'm saying I'm gonna shake it all the way to the foundation and the core so that when you know I'm taking you into what I'm going to do for your life, you'll know you've got a foundation that is steadfast, is assured. It's life itself. I will shake everything that can be shaken so those things that will remain will remain. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The reason why some people have fallen away in this season is because they can't go with you into your next. Huh. After, oh God, somebody just slip up your hands right there. I just felt the Holy Ghost. There are, there are, there are people, there are things that are being shaken off of you. Not because of what's wrong, but I heard the Lord just tell somebody because they can't go with you into your new season. Because you only have to have things that you can stand on. And they've been standing on you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. They've been leaning on you, but I'm trying to get your foundation steadfast. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Huh. He says, I'm going to shake heaven and I'm going to shake earth. In other words, I'm going to shake physical things. And I'm going to shake some spiritual things too. There are some of us that are leaned in on our religiosity more than our relationship. We are more in love with being a follower of Christ than being a follower of Jesus. 
We're more devoted to our Christianity than to the God who created it and died for us to have it. Huh. 1 Samuel 3, 17. Eli comes. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And then Eli comes to him. This little boy who's just been weaned. And says, what did God say? See, any good pastor, any good counselor, any good elder, any good leader is going to listen to what you think. And then they're going to re-navigate, recalibrate the conversation to say, okay, great. But what did the Lord say? See, the first three times, Samuel thought the voice of the Lord was the voice of the pastor. But a great mentor will teach you how to hear the voice of the Lord and let you know the difference. Hmm. Eli says, Samuel, son, what did God say? And then qualifies it. Please, don't hide it from me. I know you heard it. Now, please don't hide it. I know your ears were open. Now, let your mouth only say what you heard. There is a world who needs those close to the master to have the hearing and then have the boldness. Here's faith over fear. To not be afraid and keep it hidden. Why would God call you as a covert operative to your job? Why would he raise you to be a secret agent man? When what he's calling you to be is the prophet to the workplace. Not to say what you think, but to say what you heard. While everybody else is prophesying doom, gloom, and despair. The redeemed of the Lord should say only what God said was so. So I have a question for you today as we close. What is God saying to you about this season? No, no, I don't. What you think. is not the priority. I'm feeling frisky this morning, so can I go deeper? How you vote is not the priority. What is God saying about this season? What is it that the Lord is saying about your marriage? What is it that the Lord is saying about your children? What is it that the Lord is saying about His church? What is it that the Lord is saying about our nation? We know what everybody else is saying. What is the Lord saying about COVID-19? Everybody's clamoring to hear, uh, what's his name? Oh, y'all know too. As if he's God. Meanwhile, what he said was, I am the one who heals all your diseases. A thousand may fall at your side. 10,000 at your right hand. 
but it will not draw nigh unto the one who is abiding under the shadow of my wing. What is God saying about your finances? What is God saying about your relationship? What is God saying about your bank? What is God saying about your singleness? What, what is God saying about your health? What is God saying about where your mind is? What is God saying about that addiction, about that vice? What, okay, you, you ready? I wasn't in my notes. What is God saying about the person you have animosity against? What is God saying about the one who wounded you? What is God saying about the one who rejected you? In this season, here's a real big question. Are you listening? Or is your conversation with God really just a monologue? Where you get to lay on the Christian comfort couch and vomit all your drama and God has to sit silently so that you purge to make it through six more days. And if he is speaking, are you hiding it? Would somebody be shocked at your God set because they don't see you living it? Today, I know this is a different atmosphere, but I believe it is divinely orchestrated of Holy Spirit. You and I have to once again go, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. God, that you would awaken the Samuels. Awaken us, oh God, with your voice. Those that have been lulled to sleep by the noise-making machines around us. Ah. those that have been caught in the trap of what they say we should be hearing. Awaken us, oh God, with your voice again. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. <laughs> Our opinion is secondary to your voice, oh God. Our perspective is secondary to your voice, oh God. What is it that you would say to your son? What is it that you would say to your daughter? Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Lord somebody just stand up on your feet right there and just open up your hands as if they're your ears
your servant is listening. Not through wounded ears. Not through dysfunction. We remove every filter, oh God. Your servant is listening. about eyes are closed in this moment there's something you've been trying to hear from God about I want you to get out of your seat and meet me in this altar I, I, normally I remain socially distant but I, I gotta hear I, this is a moment I can't we'll try to remain as distant you're trying to hear Holy Spirit about a situation come on come on right out of your seat you can stay as far away from people as you need to we'll remain socially distant but there's something you've been trying to hear from the Lord about. There's something you've been trying to, you've been listening for. There's something you've been asking him for, and you can't get him to speak. You can't get him to say what it is. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't don't wonder what anybody else is saying. If you know what I'm talking about, I'm I'm in lockstep with this moment. You're trying to hear him in this moment. You're trying to hear him. you to do something. I want you to I want you to hit your knees. I want you to hit your knees. I want you to hit your knees. There's a yielding that has to take place. There's a yielding that has to take place. Antoine, I want you to just operate in that anointing. I want you to flow in the prophetic right here. I, I believe that as you're playing like when David played in those vexing spirits of Saul, they had to be silenced. And I just, come on, in this moment, I speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Those of you that are still standing, let's just create an atmosphere of worship in this moment. I feel the glory of the Lord. You're watching online and you, your ears have been clogged. I dare you in this moment. I dare you in this moment just to say, speak, Lord. He's moving. He's flowing in this moment. Your servant is listening. Awaken us, oh God. We're listening for your word, for your word about our situation.
there are moments we, we've been conditioned so much to be afraid of silence that when it gets silent kill it all the way for me Antoine we become unnerved I'm a worshiper but sometimes I gotta shut up and listen that was almost the title of my message today but I know some people be offended it's the way I was raised they spent two years teaching me to stand up and talk and they spent the next 18 years teaching me to sit down and shut up it didn't work and then there are sometimes see there's sometimes I don't even need to be speaking in tongues that nothing that comes out of my mouth can replace what God is trying to fill my ears with do, do you hear what I'm saying? I, I hear me there are moments that if I'm talking and sometimes even when he's talking through me your ears literally close when your jaw drops there are moments when you need to just be still and know I'm God close your eyes all over the room Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening.
faith cometh by hearing. The word of the Lord was scarce in those days, oh God, like they are today. Revelation was not accessible for the majority of those days. I pray that out of this house you would awaken the Samuels. I pray that the spirit of Samuel would sit on every child, every kid in our ministry. That all the days of their life they would be kept by the voice of the one who has called to them. That there would not need to be a season of prodigal living. But that they would be kept by the voice of the one who has called them. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. For every father leading his children, speak, Lord. For every mother leading this home, speak, Lord. For every spiritual leader of this house and the houses of worships of the ministries that are watching this stream, speak, Lord. For every broken and hurting, speak, Lord. For every wounded and rejected, speak, Lord. For every person of purpose, power, and position, speak, Lord. For every businessman leading his business, speak, Lord. For every missionary watching, I see you in Honduras, speak, Lord. For every daughter that belongs to the king, speak, Lord. For every marriage that comes into the sanctity under your authority, oh God, speak, Lord. Your servants have cleaned out their spiritual ears. We've circumcised our ears again, and we meditate on you day and night, oh God, speak. Your servants are listening. Recalibrate us if necessary, God. Get us back on the right track. Let us hear you again, oh God. Speak. Your servants are listening. They're listening. Like David, God, we meditate not just on your sermons, but on your word. Not just the word from Genesis to Revelation, but the rhema that is released in the moment. What are you saying about our season? Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. service are listening before we leave this moment I want to take 30 seconds and I just want us to worship the king of every king the ones whose voice thunders across the spans of the universe I want you to worship the ancient of days God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is the God of our lives. Jesus Christ, the head of his church. And the reason we live, move, and have our very being. Come on, before we leave this, I, I want us to worship. I just the ancient of days. <laughs>
I'm trying, I'm trying to move. I got another service. But I hear the Lord saying, you gotta make room for me. You gotta make room for me. There are three places in this city that I go to have an appointment with God in. Three places. I'm not talking about the preacher, I'm talking about Glenn. There are three places that I get in my truck and I drive to knowing that I'm, I have an appointment with the Ancient of Days. And when you sit in a meeting with your CEO, it's less about what you think and it's more about his decrees or her decrees. It's really more about where they're trying to take the organization than what you think he or she should be doing with the organization. When I drive to those three places, one of those three places, I usually bring something to write with because if it's not written, it's not real. And I sit and I go, speak, Lord. Speak about this. Your servant is listening. Earlier this week, I had a, a lady in our church who went through the horror of a miscarriage, and she had to deliver. She sent me a text. I woke up to that text on Tuesday morning of this mother who, before she could say hello, she had to say goodbye. And I opened up this text on Tuesday morning and it conjured up the emotions of our own testimony. It sent me pictures and it was, it was a moment. I, we, I really had to gather my, I had to hold my peace. And I almost just fired back the religious cliche that in moments of great grief doesn't mean a hill of beans bumper sticker banter doesn't bring anyone peace I grabbed my phone laid there and I went oh God oh God help this mother and then I heard Holy Spirit say now you speak life and I went I have nothing to say except I'm sorry and the Holy Spirit said but I do so I said Laid in my bed early Tuesday morning. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And I only said what he said. When we had the celebration service here Friday night, the first funeral to ever be in this church, it was a 19 week old beautiful baby boy named Gabriel okay Gabriel means God is my strength here's what Holy Spirit said to this mother you carried God's strength in you This week, you held God's strength. And now God's strength is going to hold and carry you. She said, it brought such peace. Well, that's not clever. That's just a servant who tried to hear for what somebody's season is. 
if you'll take the time to listen, God will take the time to speak. Father, I pray that we would hear you again. Allow the meditation of our heart to be focused on your word day and night. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would awaken us again with your voice. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God said, I want to ruin some of your slumber so that I can, thank you, Holy Spirit, so that I can release some of your dreams. Speak, Lord. We want to hear your voice again. Amen. And amen. And amen. It's been a good day. I love you today. I say, may the Lord, the God of your fathers, increase you a thousand times more than what you are. And may he fulfill every promise that you have heard him speak over your life. In the name of the Father, the freedom of the Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit, we say these things.